Welcome to the video on Pythagoras' theorem. Now, this theorem deals mostly with right angled triangles. So, before we go into anything else, let's look at a right angled triangle. Now, how do we tell it's a right angled triangle? Because it has a right angle at the bottom. Now, a right angle is usually shown with a little square. It doesn't have to be red, but there's a little square at the bottom. I've just made it red just now so it stands out nicely. These two sides we can call the legs of the triangle, but this side is a really important one. This is called the hypotenuse. Another Greek word, just like Pythagoras, we'll go on to him in a minute. But this hypotenuse is really important that we can spot. So the hypotenuse is the one, the side, that doesn't touch the right angle. You can see that these two sides touch the right angle, this one doesn't. It's across from the right angle, and it's the longest side. Okay, so the hypotenuse is really, really important that before we go any further, you know what a right angle triangle is and how to spot one, and you know where the hypotenuse is. Okay, let's see if this triangle can fly. Okay, right, so Pythagoras was a Greek gentleman who lived around about two and a half thousand years ago and came up with a fundamental theorem of geometry. He figured out that if we square, remember square means times by itself, this side and we add it to the square of this side, then that always equals, for right angle triangles, the square of this side. So remember again, squared is times by itself, not times two, times by itself. So, the theorem looks like this. And we say a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. Now c is always the longest side or the hypotenuse as we've just seen them. Okay, so a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared, and that is true for all right angled triangles. Alright, so let's look at an example and I'll show you how you work with this to find missing sides in right angled triangles. Alright? So here we can have a right angled triangle again with two sides marked on it, six and eight. We'll not use units just now, we'll just keep it without units for the moment and the missing side, imaginatively, called x. So how we always start this off is we write down our theorem of Pythagoras. So a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. If we look at the triangle above, we can see that we can put in 6 and 8 instead of a and b. So if we do that, 6 squared plus 8 squared is equal to... Now it's not called c in this case, it's called x, but we can still tell that it's a hypotenuse because it's across from the, the right angle here. So we're going to call that x squared. And if we square 6, we get 36. Square 8, and we get 64. And that's equal to x squared. And if we add these two together, we can find that 100 equals x squared. Now, how do we figure out then, if we know 100 is x squared, how can we figure out what x is? We'll use a square root, which remember is backwards squaring, okay? So x then is equal to the square root of 100, and that's 10. So that's an answer. So we've worked out using the theorem of Pythagoras that this side here is 10 centimetres, okay? So just to go through it again, what we've done is, we've used this idea here that these two sides, if we square them, are equal to this side squared, and we've applied that to a triangle with numbers on it. So we've done that 6 squared plus 8 squared, you can see here, gives us 100, and that must equal this side, which is called x squared. So we can then work out that x squared is 100, so what squared is 100? 10 times 10 gives us 100, so that means that x must be 10. Okay, and that's it. It's as simple as that. Sometimes we get decimals involved in this. Sometimes we get more difficult numbers, but we can just use our calculator and we'll look at that next day. But that's one of the basic examples for Pythagoras. Now, the 6, 8, 10 triangle is one of the Pythagorean triples. Now, your challenge for next day is to tell me tomorrow, or next time you're in maths, what is a Pythagorean triple. I want you to look it up tonight, I want you to find out what it is, and I want you to try and memorise some for tomorrow, because they're very important and also very useful. This has been the video on Pythagoras' theorem. Uh, 
Hopefully everyone got everything okay. If you need to rewind, remember, just do that. If you need to pause it at any point, please pause it. Make sure that everything, the example and the theorem at the top, is in your notes, Jota, for the flip classroom, folks. And I will see you next day.